Welcome to Throne Room Worship, where we discussed how the realities of heaven intersect with our life here on earth. Today I'd like to examine the powerful role that art can play in the expression of the kingdom of God here on earth. Art is the language of the heart, and God knew that we would respond to him through the myriad of ways that sound and color are perceived. God himself is the master artist, having created the universe in an awesome display, and creation with all its sights and sounds, calls us to the Creator. Romans 1.20 states, For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. So God himself declares that his creation is evidence enough of his existence, so much so that unbelieving mankind is without excuse. Now, as a harpist, my primary art form is music. The harmonious interaction of tones and frequencies blend together as an act of worship, and God inhabits my praise. The music is a carrier of the intent of my worship, and God promises to make his presence manifest anytime two or more are gathered in his name. In fact, I have invented a harp called the harpella that combines the use of sound and light that can synchronize in tandem to produce an experience that enhances worship in a unique way. The playing of this electronic harp is an artistic expression both sonically and visually which is intended to express the glory of God. The Bible actually gives us an amazing example of an artisan creating a work that God himself intended to use as a means to manifest himself through. This masterful work of artisanship is of course the Ark of the Covenant. We read in the book of Exodus chapter 31 that God specifically chooses a man named Bezalel for this great work of art. This incident is actually the first time in the scripture that identifies someone who is filled with the Spirit of God and in this case it's for a specific divine task. Here's the scripture found in Exodus 31 1 to 5. Then the Lord said to Moses, see I have chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, and I have filled him with the Spirit of God, with wisdom, with understanding, with knowledge, and with all kinds of skills, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of crafts. The Lord goes on to say of Bezalel and his team that I have given ability to all the skilled workers to make everything I have commanded you. This crafting of all the items used to create a place of worship where God's very presence dwells is a foreshadowing of something that is actually real in the realm of the heavenlies. Hebrews 9, 23 and 24 reveals to us, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Here we see that the holy places that Bezalel and his artisan associates were tasked to create with their hands are only figures of the true. Our Messiah, Jesus, has in fact entered into the real holy place in heaven itself. Instead of the holy of holies, where the Ark of the Covenant was placed to receive the blood of an animal sacrifice once a year on the Day of Atonement, we see Jesus, our atonement, going into the throne room with his very own blood. This brings us to an understanding that Bezalel had created a work of art that was a reflection of the reality of heaven. In its day, the Ark of the Covenant was the place that God chose to physically manifest himself here on earth. Here, heaven and earth intersected. In this one place, on a gold mercy seat, the glory of God would shine between the depictions of the angelic cherubim, and there God would speak. So it is with all works of art that have been birthed under the unction of the Holy Spirit, that it carries with it a touch of heaven. It is such art, whether it is music or visual art, a drama or written work, that can touch us on a deep level and reveal wondrous aspects of the kingdom of God. God will speak through our consecrated art. Sadly, though this world is filled with gifted artists of every discipline, more often than not, a godless message is broadcast 
through all forms of media. Even though God gives these amazingly talented people these artistic gifts, the gifts are given by God without repentance or restriction from their creator. We are all given a free will, and it is up to us to decide how we use these God-given gifts. Even Satan himself is described as a glorious being who worshiped God with musical instruments built right into his body. It's no wonder that he knows how to masterfully influence the arts of this world for his own sinister goals. This being said, it's important not to reject the artistic medium that carries the evil intent. The art is just the neutral container that delivers the goods, good or bad. Rather, we as believers ought to embrace excellence in art in order to speak that language of our culture and so convey the message of the kingdom of God in a relevant way. The church is guilty of presenting the life-giving gospel in dated and religious packaging so that the message seems irrelevant to the jaded ear of today's society. Instead, let's encourage the thousands of artists who serve the living God with their gift of art. Let's allow the Spirit of God, like Bezalel, to fill our anointed artisans to be the reflectors of the heavenly realities that the kingdom of God so desperately needs in order to change the nations.